For decades, France has traditionally dominated the luxury market in both perfume and champagne. And the Swiss have cornered the market for watches. But last year, the British luxury group Walpole set out to change all that, encouraging British producers to go head to head with the market leaders. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this, our seventh Walpole Awards and Medals of Excellence. Amongst the membership of Walpole are some of the most experienced and gifted brains in the luxury market. Their new mission is to advise the emerging brands on how best to make it in a fiercely competitive world. British luxury goods and brands are globally renowned for their excellence in quality and craftsmanship. Well, I personally have a passion for uh, small businesses and, uh, and small brands and uh, it was generally felt that uh, Walpole was a great thing for larger companies but for small companies who were just beginning out uh, often with uh, small turnovers but a big idea there wasn't really the opportunity to get together and to um, help these businesses become larger businesses. Walpole has run two mentoring programmes. Our Brands of Tomorrow programme launched this year. He's currently mentoring fledgling luxury businesses, including Bremont Watches, Miller Harris, and Night Timber. So the idea behind the Brands of Tomorrow was to create a board of advisors who could mentor and help um, these growing brands. Walpole selected mentors from within their ranks, all experts in their field. Their first job was to choose emerging brands that they believed in. Amongst them was Guy Salter, the former managing director of Laurent Perrier, and known as an authority in the luxury industry. Anushka Dukas was the founder and creative director of the hugely successful jewellery business, Links of London. Robert Bensousson is a leading figure in the luxury fashion world and the driving force behind internationally renowned brands, including Burberry, Christian Lacroix, and Jimmy Choo. The question of how we select people is an interesting one. Is it the product? Is it the people? Is it that they're luxury or not? It's a sort of interesting mix. Everything mechanical is what we used to play with, so whether it's building airplanes with our father, boats, musical instruments, model aircraft, and we used to spend the whole time in the workshop. One of the emerging brands they looked at was Bremont Watches, founded by brothers Nick and Giles English, both pilots and aviation enthusiasts. In 2003, they embarked on a project to make beautifully crafted pilots' watches of exceptional quality. Several years ago, we were on a flying trip and we suffered um, engine problems and had to force land in a, a, a field. Unlike England, um, in France, if you land uh, an old aircraft in a field, you can get impounded by the, the local police. So we landed in this, uh, uh, this little pea field um, and this, this old French farmer came out. Quick, 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 put it in the barn, put it in the barn. So we, you can see, you see lights flashing down in the, um, in the valley and uh, this literally blue lights coming up the road. He said, quickly put it in here. So he put the, um, the airplane in there. His house was just like our father's old workshop. You know, it had bits of engine in places. It had old grandfather clocks and, uh, and his name was Antoine Bremont. Every part of a Bremont watch is inspired by the brothers' passion for aviation. Bremont uh, was chosen um, because the watches are beautiful. We liked the way that they had set up their own workshop, they had their own uh, people assembling these watches, and there was a certain integrity to the whole process. Uh, these guys were living uh, the brand, the whole tested to endurance uh, thing. They fly aeroplanes, they drive fast cars. It was a very exciting and compelling proposition. Uh, Rob Air Ben Susan was on the, uh, on the Board of Advisors and it took him about 10 minutes to realise that this was something special and that he wanted to be involved. God, we fell in love with them. Uh, their, their passion, their interest, their story, uh, the quality of their product, the design, everything made so much sense. Timing, uh, talent, 
uh, design, uh, expertise, and when you're able to find that in the same people, it's absolutely amazing. A large part of what Robert and, and John Ayton have given us is the confidence in, in what we're doing. You know, we haven't changed our direction at all, but that confidence um, to actually progress on the route that we set out to do. Um, and, and obviously the doors that they're opening and their, their advice as we're going along. Within Mechanical Watch, you're looking at a device which, by its nature, is all about getting as accurate as possible. So uh, I think there's 86 odd thousand seconds in a day. You're trying to produce a device which is plus or minus, you know, three or four seconds if they're chronometer tested, which our watches are. And as a percentage, that's minute. I mean, it's 99.998 percent or something ridiculous. And and it's mechanical. No batteries. Little cogs and wheels on your wrist with amazing little balance springs, getting the rhythm. Um, and uh, telling the time, and for us, it's it's something very, you know, it's very very special. They launched the watch brand in 2007 after four years of perfecting the design and mechanics of their range of beautiful timepieces. You can test your watch in the, uh, you know, under pressure of 100 meters, 150 meters, whatever you want. Having Sarah Campbell, world champion free driver, physically take it down. That's quite special. Jake Meyer climbed some amazing hills and mountains and the watch he's got on, we can't get it off his wrist now. It's the best, it's the best way of testing them, I don't see how else you can. Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor both more than on a motorbike for four months. I had a look at the watches and I I've kind of fell in love with them. I've got this one and then I've got uh, another one. <laughs> and we did Long Way Round as well, which was from London to New York and through Kazakhstan and Mongolia and Siberia. And that was hard, but going through Africa we had a lot more bad roads and and uh, and so you know really shook and really tore it to pieces but it was fine and never never stopped always told the good times so I'm happy an estimated 450 million pounds is spent per year in the UK on luxury watches Bremont watch retails from 2,000 pounds the UK used to be quite a powerhouse for watches turn of the century most of the you know the luxury watches in the world be made in, in the UK then Switzerland stole the march in the sort of 20s, 30s, and we've never regained that. And in fact, a lot of the, uh, the finest innovations in the mechanical watch came from the UK. We'd like to produce a few thousand pieces a year, um, pieces that are quite personal to, to everyone involved. Um, and don't forget, we're starting from scratch, so a few thousand pieces is, is quite, a, quite a, a, a nice objective. It, it's, it's as much fun us designing it as, as actually uh, oh, great. getting out there and selling it. Celebrating the success of their product, Bremont have achieved the seemingly impossible. Just a year after launching, one of Scotland's oldest and most influential outlets have agreed to stock their watches. It is effectively a seal of approval by the silversmiths to the Queen, Hamilton and Inches. Hamilton Inches is one of those wonderful jewellery businesses, Victorian in its origins, that has become uh, Edinburgh's local jewellery business, but it's a world-class store. One of the sort of top four or five in the UK. I met Giles English. I went through the watches with him very carefully. It's got a wonderful sort of combination of elements to it, um, from a, the case and the way that that's been designed and constructed, which are extremely original, the way that they've modified the, the movement inside and the design features that they've put into that that reflect its sort of flying heritage. All of that's absolutely right. The commitment to being in this properly is one of the things that appealed enormously. And so we're committed and believe in what they're doing. Hamilton and Inches have placed Bremont's watches alongside some of the most established international brands, H. Stern, George Jensen, and Stephen Webster. It's quite exciting to have how many you see the brands they've got and to have us alongside them is really, really quite special. And Hampton Inch is an amazing company to be positioned in as your first shop. So uh, really looking forward to things to come. So uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Uh, my name's David Coleridge and my uh, company owns the watch area in the Wonder Room in Selfridges in London. Bremont is a very new brand which we introduced only in July of last year. So in, in terms of, I think I'm right in saying 36 brands in here, it is the newest brand. Bremont appealed to us for a number of reasons. It's um, young, 
It's quite different from uh, many other brands um, and uh, rather original. And it's developing a type of product and a material to, to make the watch particularly hard wearing that nobody else is doing. I'm very optimistic that Bremont will be here for many years to come. Goodwood, synonymous with motorsport and car culture, is an historic venue which annually hosts both the Festival of Speed and the Goodwood Revival. Bremont once again have a reason to celebrate. Goodwood is a classic event and we're very grateful to be part of it. You see these guys here with their, their cars underneath the bonnets, oil in their hands, smelling of fuel. It's uh, basically what we're like most of the time, isn't it? We'd like to welcome some new festival partners this year, including the BGC, Blackrock and uh, Bremen Watches. I'm delighted now to be our new official timing partner at the festival, so welcome aboard to all of you. This whole Goodwood tie-up is fantastic for us. It's boys toys with planes of automobiles and watches. It ties in well. And it's very, very British as well, which is, uh, which is obviously a key thing for us. Well, we're thrilled to have Bremont involved with us at Goodwood. Uh, timing's a very important part of the Festival Speed, and they're going to be our timing sponsor at the event. So it seems to be entirely appropriate that this great British event uh, has a great British watchmaker as its main partner. Two of the other brands Walpole adopted were some very different British brands, looking to excel in an area traditionally dominated by France. Perfume and sparkling wine. Walpole Mentors have selected British perfumiers Miller Harris and award-winning sparkling winemakers Nye Timber, both striving to succeed in a market dominated by France. Nye Timber has great potential. Uh, it's producing outstanding wine. It's won many prizes um, and we felt it deserved a higher profile. The picturesque Nye Timber vineyards are located in West Sussex, near the south coast of England a mere 200 miles from its competitors in the Champagne region of France. Night Timber actually was founded in the mid-80s by an American couple who uh, selected very precisely this location for its potential to make champagne matching sparkling wine. We were bowled over by Eric's um, enthusiasm, his commitment to this um, very ambitious project. I think that the difference between Night Timber and other English producers on the one hand and the, the big champagne houses on the other hand is that we're not that well established. So we're very keen to prove ourselves and for us at Night Timber it means that we want to make the very, very best product quality that we can. Competing head to head with Grand Marc Champagnes, Night Timber have priced their sparkling wine at £26 per bottle. Through expansion and investment, they estimate an increased annual output from 50,000 to 600,000 bottles over the coming years. My name's Sherry Spriggs. I'm the winemaker here at Night Timber. It was for me a dream come true. Um, this was a dream job. There was no question that this is exactly what I wanted to do. Winemakers around the world know of Night Timber and they know that, hey, something exciting is happening here. What we do at Night Timber, in essence, is try to keep things as simple as possible to preserve the integrity of the product. If I can make sparkling wine, I can make anything, because to me it's the epitome of wine, a winemaker's art. 42 million litres of sparkling wine is sold per year in the UK. Guy Salter had um, run Laurent Perrier in the UK some years ago, and he offered the opportunity to help uh, Eric on the sales side. I was so pleased to be able to work with him on this because in a funny way I think that amongst the more imaginative champignois they would respect very much what he's doing and I saw the vines, the vines which you know the last time I'd seen those particular grape varieties growing like that was in Champagne that I realized we were dealing with uh, something that had real roots and was as valid, if you like, as the French equivalent. I think the only issue has been that um, 
uh, Eric has very little um, wine left. Um, he's sold virtually everything he produces. Um, and that is a limitation, but I'm told he's, uh, he's planting a lot more vines over the next uh, couple of years. The planting that I originally did took place in 2005. It was about uh, 15 acres. And the next year did a lot of planting, about 140 acres that year. And we did a lot of planting last year. And now we have a total acreage of 260 acres. We are in control where our bottles end up and we rather link ourselves to the very best restaurants with the highest prestige, which helps us with our brand. The esteemed Dorchester Hotel, world renowned for its fine cuisine and wines, is a purveyor of night timber. This is the current release of the Blanc de Blanc. So this is their, uh, this is their Chardonnay, this is their top cuba, this is 100% Chardonnay. So made very much uh, in, in the style of a, of a great Blanc de Blanc from, from the Champagne region. But I listed it because it actually ticked all the boxes. It had credence, it had quality. There you go, and this, and this is why we, we listed this wine, because it does stack up, it's rich, it's got complexity, it's got balance, it's got freshness, it's got fruit, and it's a great food wine. I think a lot of people forget that that champagne actually is not just an aperitif or, or sparkling wine, it actually does, and it's meant to be uh, served with food and with cuisine. Aidan Byrne, head chef at the Dorchester's Grill, was the youngest chef ever to win a Michelin star. His cuisine is very, very intellectual, it's very, very complex. There's a lot of flavors going on. And wine matching is not as easy with, with complex dishes. So when we buy wine to, to, to match those dishes, it's, it's, you have to think about it very, very hard. It's, it's not about, you can't just start throwing Sauvignon at certain dishes. You've got to think about texture, flavor, sweetness, acidity, all those sort of things come, become very, very important. Pretty much taste and buy wines here purely on, on quality and not really, if, if it had to come from England, then, then all well and good, but purely it's about what it ends up in the glass. If, it, if, it, if the quality is right and if it's gonna, it's gonna please our customers, then that's the most important thing. We're talking about consumers here who are discerning consumers and who are primarily motivated not by what's on the label, but the actual inherent quality of the wine itself. Eric Harima believes that a longer maturation period helps bring out the special qualities in his sparkling wine. Most English producers of sparkling wine age for about um, two to four years and uh, we now see many of our competitors have already launched the vintage 2005, whereas we are now just going into 2001. English wines will be traditionally quite acidic, and the risk is if you release them too soon is that the acidity will be a bit dominant, and uh, we want a very well-balanced product. Setting out to do what Night Timber is doing is very ambitious indeed. If everything comes to pass as Eric hopes it does and all the vines settle down and do as well as we hope they will, that what we'll be talking about is a sparkling wine that is as good or better than the top let's say 25% of boutique champagnes. Night Timber has obviously um, uh, done very well. Uh, I think that um, it will, it, it can lead from the front in terms of, of English wines and um, could, uh, with a fair wind behind it, become an international name. I literally woke up one day and knew that I had something. I could, I could give something, I, I could create. All I wanted to do was I, I wanted to specialise in alcoholic perfumery. I just wanted to make beautiful fragrances. I wasn't interested in making any, anything else. The panel uh, were very impressed by um, Linda Harris's um, expertise 
and the very serious way in which she had developed her perfumery skills. Um, they liked the idea of having a, perf a living perfumer at the helm of a new brand. When we got um, nominated for Brands of Tomorrow, we were very excited. It gave us so much confidence to think, gosh, you know, we are being recognised. What we're doing is, there is something in what we're doing. Anushka Dukas, who mentored um, Miller Harris, um, having um, come from the jewellery industry, was able to offer a, a very interesting perspective on perfume products. Anushka Dukas um, is our mentor, and basically she was from Lynx, the, the wonderful jewellery brand. And um, obviously I had great admiration for what she'd done with her business. Well, I was looking for very passionate people. I felt, having, having run my own business, that passion in any, in any business, particularly a luxury business, is um, absolutely critical. I love the brand, I love the graphics and the logo, um, and I think there's so much potential with it. So as a creative person, um, I found that very exciting. Lynn Harris founded Miller Harris in 2000, opening her boutique store after 14 years of working in the perfume industry. It's very difficult in a department store environment particularly to get your message across and your ethos. And so I really do believe that um, having her own, her own stores, it enables them to tell their own story. We launched with one beautiful shop in each city. So we were in Liberty of London at the same time um, as opening our shop. Uh, we were in Colette in Paris, Corsicomo in Italy, um, and, and then later we launched in um, the US, in New York. Lynn spent five years training in France at prestigious schools in both Paris and Grasse. Lynn is a prolific creator and she's always having ideas. All of these fragrances are effectively the stories of her life. This one, Cœur d'Ete, she created when she was expecting and she wanted to create a comfort blanket in scent. Uh, she found all the smells around her really loud and, and invasive of her space so she created this fragrance and it's everything that she was craving so it's things like pear and chocolate and banana and white flower it's very pretty oh, that's beautiful. and there's a real innocence and gentleness to it the first range of fragrances that lynn created for miller harris at the point when she launched the brand back in year 2000 they're called the Classics, and they are four fragrances that span the four principal fragrance ranges. So in the Classics, you have a fresh citrus cologne, you have a floral, you have an oriental, and you have a woody. They're very important fragrances to Miller Harris. They're almost like the entry point into Lynn's creations. Um, think of it as your staples. They're the kind of basic, fundamental, parts of your fragrance wardrobe. I think what I've taken away from it is that you don't have to wear one scent, um, that actually it's much better to wear a scent for the mood you're in or for the time of day. Um, and that's very much something that I don't think anybody else really does. It explains that Lynn feels passionately that you, know, you should have three or four wardrobe of scents. I'm constantly creating, I'm constantly thinking of ideas inspired by just day-to-day -day life. It is my way of life, you know, I, I always think through, through smell and, and when I enter any room I, I smell or I meet somebody, I, I smell them, whereas for a lot of people it's, you know, it's more visual. I think the opportunity for Miller Harris is to um, develop a retail business. They need to break out of department store distribution. I believe there's an opportunity to set up uh, Miller Harris shops. Um, and that is something that uh, they're, they're definitely working on. Every day I, I feel enriched and very lucky and fortunate that I do what I do because I, because I love it. And I think it's given um, the brands a lot of confidence 
and I think it's also given, um, created a lot more interest in, in their businesses. These three British companies are taking on the French and the Swiss, traditionally leaders in their respective fields. Their success to date is largely due to passion and belief in their products. Only time will tell whether they can build on their success in the highly competitive luxury marketplace.